Now for the moment you've all been waiting for. We're gonna make our first game. Okay, it's not gonna be an amazing game. It's just gonna be a basic moving a box or a circle, whichever one, according to your choice, across the screen using the arrow keys. Or you can choose the keys. Like you can choose W, A, S, and D or whatever other keys you want to choose. Depends. So, this, this you might think is useless, but it will teach you the basics and you'll be able to move on to other stuff. So, I'm just going to like continue with this little tutorial. So, I'll just make the box be able to shoot bullets and stuff. So, it should just learn a little of the basic stuff. And then, we'll get into inputting sprites and all that cool stuff. So, basically, we have some drawing primitives in Allegro. So, Allegro has like rect, so you can draw a rectangle, circle, so you can draw a circle, ellipse, so you can draw an ellipse, and arc, so you can draw an arc, and this line and stuff, and there's more. So, I'll send you a link on to see all, all the drawing functions and all the stuff that they can do and stuff you can do with them. So first, when we're talking about rectangles, if when we're drawing a rectangle, you're going to notice that it asks you for x1 and the y1 coordinate. Sorry, let me undo that. And it's going to ask you for the x2 and the y2 coordinate. So basically, the x1 and the y1 um, are according to your starting point. And remember in our window, how the 0, 0 is at the very top left, right, of the screen. So then, when you put in your x1, y1 coordinate, as you learn in, in math, it will draw a dot at that, like it will draw an imaginary dot at that spot. And then when you put your x2 and y2 coordinate, so like your x1 and y1 would be like that dot right there. And then when you draw your x2 and y2 coordinate, it would draw that dot over there, imaginary dot. And then it would link them together to make a box like that. That's what Allegro does. So then, if I'm drawing a rectangle and I put rect, as you notice in my past tutorials, it always shows this thing that comes up and it really tells you what you're supposed to put in each one. So then it says bitmap star BMP, which stands for the bitmap we're supposed to be drawing to. And that bitmap is the screen. And then notice when I put the comma, I bold, it shows bold to which one I'm addressing to. So we want to draw a square at the top left corner of the screen. So the starting point would be 0, 0. So it would be the top corner. And we want it just to, I don't know, be 10 units wide and 10 units down. And make color and make to 255, 0, 0 to make it red. And then that will just draw that to the screen. So let's run this. And as you see, it kind of draws. It's kind of like it's kind of like taken out because of my while loop. It's kind of cut out, but you you see how the basic shape is over there. So let's exit that. Now, say so you want a full rectangle, like you don't, you want it to be full red. You just put rect fill, and when you run this, Control F5, you gotta fill in whole rectangle with part of an H, and then because the hello world thing. Because remember, we made it black if they're not pressing up in the last tutorial. So. Basically, we're going to delete all the stuff we have from the last tutorial. So let me scroll down. And remember the illusion thing I was talking about? Now you're going to learn the use of the illusion. So there's a way to get rid of you having to do illusion, but that will be later on in the tutorials. So we're going to keep the if a key escaped, then done equals true. So now we're gonna put we're gonna cut that and we're gonna paste it let's paste it under this and you remember our rest function what we're gonna do is the rest the program for like 
one tenth of a second so then when you press a button it doesn't just move way too quickly like it moves in a smooth animation so basically we should set we should make two variables called x and y to show our x and y coordinate just make the in x and y and we'll set x to equal to 0 and y equal to 0 right so then let's change these values to x y and x plus 10 and y plus 10 so you'll see the reason why we did this so in our last tutorial we learned about key presses so now we're going to be using this we put if key square bracket key uh, right so they press the right arrow key then we put x plus equals 5 so that's saying it's just the same as saying x is equal to x plus 5 and now we put if <coughs> or no let's put else if key key left then you put x minus equal 5 now a thing you want to notice <coughs> if you want to move diagonally right if you want to put to move diagonally you do it like this so if key key underscore up then y notice you have to put y minus equals 5 the reason for that is because remember y, x, um, x and y start at the top left of the screen so if you're going down the screen then you're adding the y coordinate right because the y is at the top left so each time you go down you're adding to the y coordinate so when you go up you have to subtract it and then put else if key key down and then we put y plus equals 5 and then this and then after I forgot to tell you after the rest this is where the illusion comes in so we copy that and we paste it after the rest and you make it black which will make the illusion that it's moving so then let's run this program So as we see we got a square if you press it it moves right see it moving on the screen so that's pretty neat so then let's take out let's comment out the last rect fill we put in so when you press right it will just like keep on drawing red squares the reason we put the black is because every single time it moves you want to draw a black space in front of it so that it doesn't leave a trail behind it now to explain the diagonal movement the reason why it moves diagonal is because when you put an if statement as you learned in the beginning it says if this is true then you do that then but if that's not true then you check to see if this is true right so it's either they press right or left right they can't be moving both directions at the same time and same for up and down but if you if so since I put if for this right it checks if I'm pressing right so if I'm pressing right this isn't an else if statement it's just a regular if statement so if I'm pressing right and I'm pressing up then it will move in a diagonal movement and same if I'm moving right and I press down because this else, else if statement isn't a part of the if statement and I know it sounds kind of confusing but once you replay it in your mind you'll understand it because I did not understand this when I first heard it and I got it after if you want me to explain it deeper just leave a comment in the comment section and I don't know how long the video is how long is it so far oh yeah I think I gotta end it so I'll continue it in the um next tutorial so hope you liked it and just play around with it and bye